our family consists of four members, including our parents. Emily takes after our mom in terms of personality. She's friendly but can be a bit lazy at times. She enjoys teasing my dad and me as we are more sincere individuals. When we were kids, our mom, who shares a similar temperament with Emily, had a soft spot for her. It was pretty clear that she favored Emily over me. Whenever she hung out with friends, it was always Emily who got to go, leaving me behind because, according to her, it's embarrassing to introduce plain and quiet Ashley to her friends. On the flip side, Mom was really proud of Emily, who was outgoing and well-liked whenever they went out. Despite having a mom and sister like that, the reason I could stay positive was because of my dad. He appreciated my sincerity and loved both Emily and me equally. I cherished my dad's fair approach. Even as an adult, my mom's treatment of me didn't change much. Thankfully, my dad's presence kept our family balanced and stable. However, when my father retired at the age of 65, a mishap occurred at home. He stumbled over a small step, resulting in a broken bone. Despite his efforts with surgery and rehabilitation, his aging muscles didn't bounce back easily. As he spent more time confined to bed and in need of care, my mother and Emily grew colder towards him. While glancing at a guidebook, my mother and Emily excitedly discussed their plans for a family trip. When I inquired about their conversation, my mother replied with a hint of irritation. They were organizing a family trip, but considering Dad's mobility challenges, I pointed out that traveling might be tough for him. In response, Emily said with a smile, Well, we're not planning to bring him in the first place. We intend to leave him at home. That's cruel, I remarked. It would be tough for him if he's left alone. If Dad's not coming, I'll stay home with him, I declared. After expressing this, my mother and Emily exchanged smiles. Following that, my mother stated, That's fine, too. If that's the case, Emily and I will just go by ourselves. Whether you two come or not is up to you, but since it's a family trip, we'll be using money from Dad's bank account. A quick look at the guidebook revealed they had chosen a room meant for only two people. It was evident they never intended to bring my father or me along. Following that, my mother and Emily frequently ventured out on their own, staying at upscale inns and dining at renowned restaurants. It felt as if neither my father nor I existed in the house. I observed their actions from a distance, working diligently to complete my tasks, quickly to attend to my father. When I couldn't manage everything alone, I sought assistance from care services for tasks like bathing and accompanying my father on short walks around the neighborhood. On days when I had to work late, I asked my mother and Emily to look after my father. However, they avoided the responsibility. Ashley, I came to help with the bath, but is there no one at home today? Upon receiving notification from the care service staff, I promptly called my mother and Emily. Despite informing them of the staff's visit in advance, they had left my father alone and gone out. When they finally returned home, I confronted them, but there was no apology. The staff are professionals, right? It's okay even if we aren't there. Dad is an adult. He'll be fine being left alone. We don't want our time taken up caring for him like you, they said, seemingly believing they were doing nothing wrong. Realizing I couldn't rely on them, I decided that taking care of my father was my responsibility. I juggled work and caregiving. The daily grind was far from easy, especially since neither my mother nor Emily showed any concern or understanding. As the days passed, my father's condition worsened. He spent more time seated than walking and ate much less. Approaching the ninth year of caring for my father, I grew worried about his frail appearance. When I took him to the hospital, a shocking diagnosis awaited me. Your father has advanced cancer. 
Realizing that our time with him might be limited, I was determined to support him in his final days. I made the difficult decision to quit my job and become his full-time caregiver. I knew I had to share this with my mother and Emily. Their reactions were quite unexpected. When I told them about his condition, my mother remarked, Really? He never drank or smoked. It's unfortunate that such a sincere person ended up with cancer. Emily, looking stunned, said, I can't believe you'd give up your job to take care of Dad. I'd never make that choice. I expected them to be concerned about him, but there was no sign of it. Their indifference surprised me as if it was someone else's problem. In the end, they only visited him briefly in the hospital and never made a proper visit. I provided daily support during his chemotherapy treatments. Despite our efforts, the cancer continued to progress, and six months later, he passed away. The days following the diagnosis were a blur. Upon learning of his death, my mother and Emily had a private discussion and left me to organize the funeral alone. Then they disappeared somewhere. Exhausted as I returned home, my mother and Emily, who had already arrived, invited me to the living room, claiming they had something to discuss. Without considering my fatigue, my mother abruptly announced, Regarding your father's inheritance, Emily and I will inherit this house and all other assets. Honestly, I wasn't in the mood to discuss inheritance on the very day my father passed away. However, Emily chimed in, We even have a proper will. Look. She proudly presented a document and began to explain, right after Dad was admitted to the hospital, Mom and I visited him and had him sign this. It states that you won't inherit anything. Dad agreed to it immediately. With a smirk, Emily said, after all the help you provided, it's so cold, right? Maybe Dad, in the end, preferred me over his two serious elder daughters. That's impossible. Before I could respond, my mother interrupted with an inappropriate grin. Clearly, Emily is more adorable. Though your father always stayed home and had no hobbies, he surely saved a lot, right, Mom? Ian quit her job because of the inheritance, and I took some time off work to enjoy the inheritance for a while. They continued without allowing me to say anything. My mother then informed me, you have no job, won't get a penny from the inheritance. We plan to enjoy a vacation abroad for a while, so you should leave this place by then. Hurt and angered by their callousness, I calmly told them, I understand your thoughts. From now on, I can't imagine living together with you two. I'll gladly leave. Despite their initial surprise at my acceptance, the two soon smiled smugly together. Good to know. Once you leave this house, never rely on us again. Our relationship ends here. Whatever happens to you, we want no part in it. Don't even think of contacting us. Receiving this intense sentiment from my mother, I packed only my essentials and left the house. A few days after the inheritance discussion, something unexpected happened. I received a call from my mother the same person who claimed she would cut off contact with me. When I answered, she immediately confronted me in anger. What have you done? Where is all the money from your father's account gone? Why are you suddenly calling? Didn't you say you wouldn't contact me? Silence. This is an emergency. Return your father's savings immediately. What are you talking about? I left the passbook at the old house, didn't I? I have no way of accessing it after I left. But the money in the account is definitely gone. Such a significant amount of his savings couldn't have disappeared so suddenly. I found it suspicious. Moving out swiftly without securing a job seemed to have led my mother to assume that I had mismanaged my father's money. Mom, how haven't you ever checked the account balance before? I haven't bothered with such things. I see. If you had, you would have noticed that Dad's savings weren't that much to begin with. 
What do you mean his savings were? Oh, where did his retirement money go? Oh, we used it for our wedding ceremony in the new house. Wedding? New house? I have no idea what you're talking about. I had been romantically involved with a man named Sean, who was responsible for the living service for my father. Our relationship started through our mutual care for my father. I informed my father about my relationship with Sean early on in our dating. When Sean proposed, I was overwhelmed with living and work responsibilities and couldn't make a decision. Upon learning the truth, my father said, care for yourself more than me. I want you to have a happy marriage, and he cheered me on. Despite my hesitations, he even started assisting with the wedding venue, selecting a new place to live and looking for a new home. We had reserved a wedding date for the following year and signed a contract for a new apartment that my father liked. All of this occurred six months before we discovered his terminal cancer. As a gesture of gratitude, my father covered most of the costs for the wedding and the new apartment. That was the reason for the decrease in the account balance. Hearing the turn of events, my mother's voice trembled. She was clearly shaken. So there wasn't any inheritance for us to inherit in the first place, primarily just the family home, but given its location, we shouldn't expect the high selling price. Emily, having overheard the conversation, anxiously grabbed the phone from my mother. Wait, so the financial assistance for your wedding is much more than the inheritance for mom and me? That seems to be the case. Dad knew about my marriage and me leaving the house, so maybe he didn't see a problem in leaving the family home to both of you. He might have used a significant amount for me and intended the inheritance to compensate for that. Could it be that the reason you quit your job was because your marriage had been decided upon? That's right. Sean is also involved in investment activities and is financially stable. He wanted me to become a full-time housewife. Also, I thought if I resigned early, I could focus on taking care of our father. I can't believe it. Why did you keep the news about your marriage and savings a secret from us? Taking a deep breath, I answered. I thought about telling you several times, but every time, neither of you showed any interest and avoided the topic. Why didn't you stop me from taking a break from work or mom from quitting her part-time job? How are we supposed to live now? When I wanted to talk to you after the funeral, wasn't it you and mom who shut me down, saying you can expect anything from us? But I thought family members should help each other out. When I was swamped with work and living, you were out having fun, neglecting dad. How can I think of someone who said such mean things as family? Don't just say whatever is convenient for you. Shocked and speechless, Emily was caught off guard. Following that, my mother implored, Ashley, the truth is, I've already paid for the trip. I also made various purchases expecting the inheritance. So now I have no savings left. So what about it? I've already quit my part-time job, right? If we don't get any inheritance money, we won't have any money for next month. So until I find a new job, I hope you can lend us some. When you kicked me out of the family home, didn't you say you'd never come to me again, that our relationship was over, that you wouldn't interfere with whatever happens to me in the future? About that, neither of you ever helped when Dad and I were going through tough times. Now, when you're in trouble, you want to rely on me. That's incredibly brazen. But if you don't help us now, what will we do? Without waiting for my mother to finish, I ended the call and blocked their numbers. I was utterly disgusted by my mother and sister, who only claim to be family when they're in trouble. I decided to distance myself from these two. Later on, I heard from various people that, although my mother and Emily had canceled their trip, since it was a last minute cancel, they couldn't get a refund. They've been barely scraping by asking friends and relatives for money. They had to sell their house, but as I expected, 
they didn't get as much as they hoped. With the initial expenses for a new place and moving costs, they had hardly any money left. Emily returned to work, but because she asked her colleagues for money, her relationships at work became strained. She had planned to leave her job soon after finding a good partner, but because of the situation, that partner, as well as other men, distanced themselves. Her friends, too. My mother tried to find another part-time job, but her previous workplace had already hired someone else, so it was hard for her to return. Due to her age, her job opportunities were limited. They managed their living expenses with my mother's meager part-time salary and Emily's earnings, slowly repaying their debts. Both of them seemed worn out. As for me, I was able to have a small wedding at the venue my father chose. The only regret is that my father couldn't be there for my wedding, but I believe he's watching over our happy moments from somewhere. My married life with Sean has been smoother than expected. We're enjoying peaceful and fulfilling days together. I'm eternally grateful to my father for supporting my relationship with Sean and giving me this opportunity to build a peaceful life with my husband. Always remembering my gratitude to my father.